Yep. Today's speaker um, in the past 12 months, I believe sold over 600 homes. He's absolutely on fire. Um, and he's going to teach you how to sell water real estate. Um, he's one of the biggest stars I know of. And I love this guy. So help me welcome Mr. Matt Smith to give you some nuggets, some key salient points, how to take your sales business to the next level. Matt, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Brent. It's an honor. I um, appreciate you right, every, uh, giving me the opportunity. Absolutely. So here's what I want everyone to do. Go to your view upper right and go speaker only so that you're not distracted by the, all the boxes. I want you to focus on what Matt's going to say for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Matt, the floor is yours. All right. So I'm going to get my standing desk here so I can give you guys some energy. I got to channel my inner Brent Gove here. Um, I like it. Some energy. So, all right, guys. So, I think think the first thing that I think of when I think of lead conversion is mindset around lead conversion. How do you sell more real estate? I think most agents are trying to solve the wrong problem. They think if I don't have enough sales, that means I need more leads. But more leads has never equaled more sales ever in the history of real estate. We are shooting at the wrong target. And so what I want you to realize is the mindset, let's start there and then I'll give you some really, really tactical stuff. So the mindset around lead conversion is I think we have an entitlement in this industry and a false expectation of what a lead is and what a lead is not. And if we don't understand that, I can give you the best skills, the best tactics, the best training, but you're not going to convert leads because your mind and your head isn't in it. And you're going to be expecting the wrong things. Most real estate agents think a lead is somebody that is act absolutely right now ready and willing and able to buy or sell real estate. That is not what a lead is. The agents that are at the top of the top understand how to get a lead, which is someone that raised their hand, said, I'm somewhat curious and interested in real estate. They're in the curiosity phase. That's where 95% of your audience lives, by the way, is in the curiosity phase. Only 5% at any given time are in what is called the consideration phase. And so are you trying to talk to the 95 or the 5? Getting the difference between the 95 and 5 is very, very difficult. And so I always assume and I, I lead and I sell through curiosity. And so I have a quote that I say all the time. I believe that the quality of the lead is determined by the skill and the will of the agent. Period. The quality of the lead is determined by the skill in the will of the agent. You give Brent Gove an online lead, you give Brent Gove someone that walks into an open house versus somebody that doesn't have that passion, doesn't have that fire, doesn't have that energy, doesn't have that skill, which agent's gonna convert that lead? Brent's gonna convert it 10 times out of 10. The other agent's gonna find excuses as to why that wasn't a good lead and they weren't really interested because they haven't spent the time developing the skills within to ask questions to pique their curiosity, to build depth of relationship so they can lead the buyer or seller through the process. You see, I said a long time ago when I started my team is I don't want to sell people. I want to help people. Anytime that we would say the word sell, we don't say that in our organization. We replace it with help. But in this new market, we are all new agents in this new market, by the way. And in this new market, if you don't adapt to it and you don't change, you're going to be left behind. Or I hope this isn't you. You're here. So this probably isn't going to be you. But there's probably friends that you know that are no longer have their license because they didn't adopt to the change. And so I want you to realize that if you, if you are willing to make the change and realize that my skill and my will determines the quality of the lead, then the world is yours. Anything is possible. Come but on. you have to be willing to hold up the mirror to yourself and say the quality of the lead is determined by how well I work it, period. End of story. Because, I mean, no, nobody works off cold calls anymore. Nobody does cold calls. Like we, we have this false narrative that we think it's cold calls, but it's really warm calls. It's people that raised their hand. It's people that walked into an open house. It's people that have an expired listing. We know they're a homeowner and they want to sell. Those aren't cold leads. So who are the agents that are going to win? The ones that understand it's up to me, they're willing to accept responsibility. They look in the mirror and say, I need to work on me and I need to change with the times. I need to Matt, make sure can that I can adopt my skill set. Oh, oh, I, want, I want to jump in on what you said really quick. They're not cold calls. They're warm calls. Change your That's mindset. Right. 
People don't want to talk to me about X. Yes, they do. They can't wait to talk to me. I'll say yes. this. There's a in the industry, you probably heard your broker saying it's a travesty. It's a tragedy. Buyers are liars. That is not true. You're not any good at sales. Buyers are not liars. You need yes. to get better buyers are like a gift. You can go meet them, show them property today, write an offer tonight, get it accepted tonight, close in 10 days, and put money in your bank account in 10 days. I love buyers. They're not liars. So when you hear bad thoughts, cold calls, buyers are liars, lose that, replace the, the stuff. Back to you, Matt. I appreciate I love what it. you said. That's I love it. It's it's so true. And I think so many to on that narrative, Brent, you, you spark something in my brain is that I think a lot of times around the mindset is, again, we have we have this entitled attitude, which is just crazy to me. We're in an industry where if you do a little bit of work, you get the biggest reward on the planet. Right. Like what we do really isn't that hard. It just really isn't. Are there hard days? Sure. Are there hard moments? Yes. But the agents that are winning at the highest levels, the top one percent, if you have an honest conversation with them, they probably don't they don't work that hard compared to someone that actually has a hard job. But we just get this entitled attitude. And we have these false narratives and expectations. And so I think if we just realize that the, the quality of the lead is determined by how well I work it, what is my skill set around it? How, how much am I willing to go after that lead? So I said skill, but I also said will. So what is your work ethic? How willing are you to get uncomfortable? How willing are you to ask that next question? Going back to my don't sell people, we help people. In today's market, we're all new agents in this new market. People don't want to be sold. People don't even need your help in this marketplace. They need to be led. It's time for you to stop being a helper and start being a leader. It is your responsibility as a real estate sales pro professional. We have the honor and the privilege to help people with the biggest purchase or the biggest sale of their lives every single day. Do we lead them through the process or are we just a glorified door opener? that waits for them to tell us when they're ready. That's what separates the agent that got out of the business versus the agent that's having their best year ever. It's these little subtleties and it's the way that you approach these. It's the intention around these things. And I wanna make sure that you have the intention of this lead is, the quality of this lead is determined by my skill set and my willingness to work it. There's two things that I find in common. So I'm a team leader, um, I'm in the trenches doing this daily. And on top of that, I actually am a real estate coach for some of the top teams in the country. Um, I'm a coach for John Sheplak. I coach a lot of top team leaders. So I get to see this from a lot of different perspectives. And too many agents struggle with understanding that if you're in a normal organization and where most teams are, and most of you, you don't have a lead generation problem. You have a lead conversion problem. You don't have a lead generation problem. You have a lead conversion problem. What if I told you most of you, if I looked at your business and I dove in, I spent a day with you, I could show you where you missed millions of dollars from people that are already in your database, millions of dollars from people that you already met with, millions of dollars from people that you already talked to on the phone because we don't review our game film. We don't go back and after we have a phone call, after we host an open house, after we meet with a buyer or a seller, go back and say, man, what did I do well? What can I do differently next time? What can I do better? And we review our game film. What does professional athletes do? They watch their game film. They practice. And I think sometimes we get out of that habit. If I asked you by show of hands, who wants to get paid like a professional athlete? Everyone would be like me, pick me. I want to be paid like a professional athlete. But then we aren't willing to do what professional athletes do. They practice harder than they play. When's the last time you actually practiced with intention? When's the last time you actually showed up and said, I'm going to look in the mirror? My message to my team in Q4, guess what? It's you versus you. It's not you versus the market. It's not you versus the interest rates. It is you versus you. Are you willing to look at the man or the woman in the mirror and accept extreme personal responsibility because you are where you are because of the choices, decisions, habits, routines, and rituals that you have, period. It's not, so you're not a product and a victim of the marketplace. You're better than that. Don't fall for that trap. So you guys with me on mindset? You want to go to some tactical stuff? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Good. So I think there's so many different ways that I could go. Um, and literally, I'm preparing for a speech, Brent, tonight. I'm finalizing my slides for a, a conversion con is the name of the event. It's all around lead conversion. So this is funny timing. Um, so it's top of mind nice. for me. And, um, and we actually had a, we had an offsite meeting with my team today. Um, and during lunch, we had fun. We've got a, like a championship belt. We had a script battle. 
So the agents volunteered and we did it like NCAA tournament style, like person versus person. We voted on who won the objection battle. Um, and I learned a lot there that I want to unpack with you guys from my agents that are doing it right now. And raise your hand or, or if most of you don't have video on, but if you guys have heard of LP Mama before, right? The script LP Mama. Some of you are saying no. No? Cool. Let me start there. And then I'll give you the enhancement, the enhanced version. LP Mama. It's a framework and a talk track that has been around for years. I didn't invent it. I just use it. And it's because it gives you the five, five, six, I think it's six major talk tracks that are important for you to have with every conversation or with every buyer. Location is the L. Price is the is the P. M is motivation. Agent, are they working with another agent? We've got mortgage, and then we've got appointment. LP mama. If you go back and you unpack your conversations with a lead that you turn into appointment, the majority of them will have three of the six of those in the in the conversation. Just you do it by habit, right? But if you actually do it on purpose and you do it intentional. I'm going to help you make that script and that dialogue just completely change the game for you. Number one, I call them power questions. The number one thing of all of those things. So again, we got location, price, motivation, agent, mortgage, and appointment. Number one is the appointment, right? You got to set the appointment. Otherwise, why are you on the phone? But if we put that to the side, the most important factor of all of those is the motivation of the buyer or seller. Too many times we get stuck trying to find the quote unquote perfect property or we're waiting for things to be perfect or we're waiting for them to lead us through the conversation. Well, when you find the right property, I'll just send it to you. And we, we hang up on more clients than clients hang up on us because we, again, stop being a helper and start being a leader, lead them through the process. I've said this so many times and you guys have probably heard this before, but you can use a good reminder. Great salespeople, Ask great questions. Ooh. Too many of you are wondering, what do I need to say? And that is the wrong question. What you should be asking is, what are the questions that I can ask? We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Are you listening twice as much as you're talking? So in that, hidden in this script, I call them power questions. What are power questions? As an example, here's one. We're talking about location. So Brent, in your inquiry, it looks like you were interested in getting a really good deal on a property in Sacramento area. I'm curious, is that the only area you're looking to buy in? Uh, I'm thinking about not a yes or no question, team. right? Yeah. Like that. How many of you ask that question when you get an online lead or an inquiry, or maybe you even meet them at an open house? This talk track and framework works for everywhere. Hey, Brent, thanks for showing up at my open house here in Sacramento. I'm just curious, is it the only area you're looking to buy in? Looking to buy in. How many of you have maybe talked with someone and worked too long, maybe even met with them and find out they're a renter or find out they're not qualified or find out that you just wasted your time? So this is a, this is very intentional. Words matter. The language matters. And back to the motivation. I think too many times we get stuck on trying to find the perfect property. So is price important? Sure, price is really easy. So Brent, this house listed for 800000 Is that the price range you guys are hoping to stay in? Awesome. What's your ceiling price? Maybe there's deep, different questions we can ask there, right? But that's that's the point is um, location is crucial. There's three things that matter in real estate, right? Location, location, location. You need to understand the location of the person that you're talking to, the person that you're meeting with. And you need to ask great questions around that so they can, here's the, you need, you need to write this down. This is a superpower in sales. There are superpowers called self-discovery. How can I lead them to ask them great questions where they can discover themselves the answers that I know? How many, how many buyers do you know that start looking for um, a condo in XYZ area and end up buying a single family in ABC area for the exact opposite budget, double or half or whatever? Buyers don't know what they're looking for. They need you to step up and be the leader and help them discover what that is. That's good. All right, the most important part of this whole script is the motivation. I learned this from John Cheplak. The heart chooses and the mind justifies. The heart chooses and the mind justifies. Quit talking to the logical brain of your buyers and sellers. We talk way too analytical. 
Do people buy, do, do homeowners and home sellers buy houses on logic or emotions? Emotions, 99% of the time. Investors, different conversation, right? But most of us work with buyers and sellers. And so are we talking to the logical brain or are we connecting to the heart of the human? One of the things that all of us love Brent for is the heart that he has. When's the last time Brent told us anything that's super logical, that like was a light bulb? But we all love his passion and his fire because of who he is. And it doesn't mean that Brent doesn't know those things, but he understands the importance of connecting to the heart of the human. One of the biggest hearts of the people that I know. He just wants to give and he wants to help. And it makes me want to give back. Are you, are you displaying that? And are you cascading that to the buyers and sellers you're working with? And so how do you do that? The most important part is to really understand their motivation. How many agents have gotten stuck trying to find the quote unquote perfect property? And then you get stuck in this weird hamster wheel of you're just sending properties and hoping, sending and hoping, sending and hoping, sending and hoping. That's a dead end road. Don't even do it. That's a hang up. You hung up on them. You just wasted your time. Might as well just find another lead if that's how you're going to handle it. Because somebody like Brent, somebody like myself, we're going to grab them by the arms. We're going to bear hug them and we're going to lead them through the home buyers home selling process. While you're sitting here complaining, saying, maybe not you, hopefully not you, but someone's sitting there complaining, well, I wish I could get better leads. You just got to handle the lead better. You have to lead them through the process. So instead of spending all this time on trying to find the quote unquote perfect property, what if you actually understood the emotion behind their move? Why are they looking to buy? How soon? Why is that important to them? And you need to write these phrases down. We don't go depth of these conversations enough. Tell me more. What else? And shut up. When they start talking emotionally about why they're looking to buy or sell, all you say is, oh, thanks so much for sharing that, Brent. What else? Ah, oh, awesome. Tell me more. Two ears, so good. one mouth. You, we try to handle objections before we actually are understanding the root of the problem. You need to go deeper, not wider. And going to the motivation. And, and I know I'm out of time, so I'm going to give, this is my power question. I know I said to write a lot of things down, but guys, I'm telling you, these things move the needle. My average agent on my team, and I'm going to brag a little bit because I have amazing humans on my team. Most of them were brand new to real estate when they joined us. But my average agent on my team was going to make four times the median income for our area this year on a team split. Because we practice and we understand the nuances of these things. So it works really, really well. So. Then we go to set the appointment. And so I said, LP mama, I want you to change it. I want you to do LP ma'am. L-P-M-A-A-M. So many agents get stuck on the mortgage question. So if you get stuck and you have a hang up there, set the appointment first. And we tell you how to set the appointment. Here's how you go. So we're talking through location. We're talking through price, talking through motivation. We um, realize that they don't have another agent. So here's the power question. So Brent, I was wondering. What are the next steps you need to take in buying your next home? I gave them the power. Guys, every single time. You know what they say? Brent, that's a good question. I don't know. Then you just put on your superhero cape. No worries, Brent. I got you. That's what I'm here for. Nice. I know exactly what the next step is. What works better for you? Two or three o'clock for us to meet to go over this next step for you and your family. So good. And then after you set the appointment, then you go and you bring up the mortgage. Don't, we have too many roadblocks, right? Like I want to set the appointment first and then I get the commitment and then it goes like this. So Brent, before we meet, every seller in today's market is going to want to know, are you paying cash or will you need help obtaining financing? That's after they've already committed to the appointment. And then you just slide in with the prequel, right? With your trusted lender. Nice. That's all I got. I'm out of time. That was so good, dude. That was awesome. Uh, we could have listened to you for an hour. And it was so good. I told him I have a hard stop at, at 530 Eastern, uh, 230 Pacific. Matt, so good. Everybody, um, go back to group view. Go back to view. Put it on uh, gallery. Gallery. So I want to see you. If you thought he knows the stuff and this is helpful, just wave at him. Give him some love. Put stuff in the chat bar. Come on. Come on, you guys. Wave at him. Let him know it was awesome. Thank they you loved guys. you.
Even Carmen's giving you hot. Even John Olson, man, like the beard. <laughs> Come on, Johnny. So it was, it was in case you're wondering, that was phenomenal. Mr. Hillier out in front of our office there, Tom Costello, Joyce, thank you for turning on your cameras. Matt, that's so good, man. So good. We got so we're gonna record this. It'll be on my YouTube channel. Let's do it to it again and again. Now you only coach big teams for Chet Black, right, Matt? You don't do any other. Yeah, kind of only coaching. team leaders. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't okay. have to be a big team leader. It could be aspiring, but yeah, team leaders. All right, good. So, but if there is a team leader and they want to be coached by you and Chep, can they just reach out to you or something? Or yeah, just find me on social. Find me on on social or, or reach out. Um, yeah, I'm not. Or I'm not text me find. and I'll connect you to Matt. Or That's just right. text me and I'll connect you to Matt. He didn't even know I was going to do that, but man, I'll tell you what. If I was running my team like the old days, I'd be like, uh, I'm in. Let's talk. Anyways, thank you, Matt, and uh, hey, everybody. Uh, there is no 1% club next week because I will be in Miami EXP con. So we'll see you in two weeks. No meeting next week. You get time off for good behavior because you will be in EXP con. I'm hoping. And uh, if not, we'll see you in two weeks. But everybody's going to Cabo. Get your ticket, expcabo.com. Check out the website, expcabo.com. Matt Smith, thank you. And we'll see everybody else. Bye for now. Love you guys. Be good. Bye, Mark. See you guys. Bye, everyone.